everyone, it's uh, Dave here. Um, welcome to the channel Biking with Granty Grant. Um, so uh, today I thought what I'd do is a brake caliper clean out on a Kawasaki Versus uh, 650 from 2013 model. Um, there was actually a request from someone who was on uh, the Kawasaki uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook group. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for requesting that. So what I'm going to do is basically just a quick clean out. This is not going to be um, sort of taking seals out uh, and rebuilding, you know, from uh, from scratch or a full bleed through. This is going to be a video basically just a quick sort of clean out, um, which I tend to do every sort of six to eight weeks, especially around winter time because of the amount of rubbish that sort of uh, builds up over the over the winter months. Um, just as a little cheat, I should let you know, I did these calipers about two or three weeks ago, so they're gonna look relatively clean, but the process I go through is the same. Um, and I also fitted brand new brake pads as well. Um, so what I'm gonna start off doing is just go through the equipment you're gonna need um, to use uh, to specific to this uh, this bike and what I found personally works for me. Now, please bear in mind, obviously, um, you know, that you, you use, you're working on brakes, um, so make sure, of course, that uh, you know if you don't know what you're doing, make sure you look into it first. If you don't feel confident, don't attempt it. You know, this is just my personal way of doing my brakes, okay? Um, you know, there may be some other things that you think, oh, actually, I wouldn't do that, and that's fine. Um, if there's any suggestions you think uh, that you'd like to put forward, please feel free to leave a comment uh, down below. Um, you know, obviously. Let's not have people getting uh, funny with each other, um, but certainly, you know, uh, it's always good an opportunity to have a, 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 a sort of discussion about um, what people tend to do and, and little tips and tricks, you know. Um, so basically, I'll just go through basic equipment first of all, and then we'll get on to it. Okay, so. Okay then, guys, for the, uh, for the brake caliper clean out, basic equipment I'm going to use okay so I've got a 12 mil socket uh, on an extension bar and a ratchet um, I'm also going to be using a 5 mil socket and you're probably thinking what on earth are you going to do uh, use that for well I'll show you that later because it becomes quite important um, and I've also got here a small uh, flat blade screwdriver um, that will come in very handy some pliers may or may not be needed but just to have them just to be care uh, just just in case you know just to have them there uh, Phillips screwdriver of course uh, a toothbrush for cleaning out with as well as a uh, scouring pad um, brake disc cleaner um, obviously suitable for brakes uh, not only just the discs but also the calipers as well themselves um, I tend to use muck off but I've also used silkling um, but obviously whatever works for you uh, and uh, <laughs> Plenty of kitchen roll because you never know what you're going to get in uh, find when you get in there. Another thing that I found really helpful um, is a towel as well, uh, and this will fall into why um, I suggest using um, a Phillips screwdriver in a second. Okay, so just a ca uh, towel to cover up underneath the brake reservoir because dot four brake fluid is corrosive uh, and can damage paintwork. So first thing we're going to start off doing um, is I'm actually going to loosen off the top reservoir bolts um, you're probably wondering why I'm doing that and the reason is is because when we actually clean out the pistons I'm going to pump them out and then I'm going to push them back now I don't know if anyone's ever seen it before but some people try and push pistons back and there's too much fluid in the system and they end up cracking the sight glass down here which is obviously um, very expensive because that's a new reservoir um, so the way to avoid that is to actually just loosen the bolts off you don't need to take the cap off but it's just enough so that if you do push a little bit too far on the system um, you don't actually go and damage it and crack it completely so first thing I'm going to start off with then is these two bolts here, these 12 millimeter bolts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start by cracking them off, first of all, okay? I'm gonna do one and two. What I wanna do is I want to loosen them at an even rate um, because I don't want the caliper finding that it's being held on too tightly or starts going skew F because um, that's not good. So you want to make sure you take them off in even amounts. So once you've loosened them off, just to sort of finger tight, you can actually use that then um, to, uh, to take those two bolts out. So those two are out. 
Uh, as you can see as well, one thing I did forget to mention was I also use copper grease. Um, that's really important, so we're going to get that in a second. Um, in my magnetic tray, I'm just going to line them up, uh, set top and bottom like that, so when I map them out, as you can see, it's a magnetic tray, so I have the top caliper, this top caliper bolt that side, and the bottom on that side. So everything is is set up and spaced out as it would come out for the caliper. No need for any hammers here. Just rock it and slide it off. Now this is where it's going to come into in really handy um, for for that small screwdriver. So as I mentioned earlier on I obviously have a small flat blade screwdriver and the reason is is there is an R clip just there you see um, now to get at that it is very difficult um, so what I do is I use my R, uh, my flat blade screwdriver just to remove that R clip like so it also gives it a good hooking area there, so I can hook that clip and put, remove it and pop it into my magnetic tray. Now the next thing is, now that you've done that, this here is what will need to come out of this. This is a split pin, and that 5mm socket that I was going to use is to loosen this off, because sometimes, obviously this one's been recently greased, so it's going to move nice and easily. That's going to turn nice and easy and come out but it's sometimes a bit of a pain. So I'm gonna use that just to twist it, just to try and prise it a little bit, and then I'll get my fingers in there. The fillet, uh, the pliers that I suggested are also to help grab and pull this out. Now you've gotta be really careful because as soon as this comes out, these pads will become free and they can drop. You must not drop brake pads on the floor. Um, the reason for doing that is if you drop brake pads on the floor, this friction material here that actually is against the disc is actually pressed together. And if you drop them on the floor, even though you can see, can't see any visible signs outside on the outside, it could actually have fractured on the inside, which means under heat, you can actually find it starts disintegrating and then your friction material starts falling apart under braking. Okay, so I'm going to keep the pads pushed down as I remove the pin. And that pin is your split pin, which will go in the magnetic tray. I will then very carefully remove these pads so the first one to go is going to be the outer one. So the outer one here lifts up and it's actually pivoted up here. So it pivots on this little bar up here. And I'm just gonna take it off, lift it up, slide it across and out it comes. I'm gonna pop that on the floor with the backing plate, which is this bit here. Backing plate is the metal bit here. That is gonna sit on the floor. You do not want any contamination on, on the friction material. So always lay your brake pads that way down. Okay, so what's the next part? Well, now we can see our pistons. And as you can see, even though I cleaned them out a couple of weeks ago, they are still pretty filthy. Um, I should point out that this corrosion in here is actually, uh, I actually got that with the bike as it was. Um, not particularly old, but you know, you will find that unfortunately. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to spray and clean what I can see and then I'm going to start pumping the pistons out. Don't need too much, just a little bit, and then start giving that a nice good scrub in the back there. Just try and get a nice bit, nice bit of clean cleaning going on there. Just agitate the dirt and stuff because that's all going to be dirt from the road and 
grease and braking material that has come off your uh, come off your brakes. So now that that's all relatively good looking inside there, I am gonna just check that the pistons, these metal bits here, that push the pads against the disc are actually moving correctly. Um, we want them to move at an even rate because if one's faster than the other, you can find that you'll get uneven wear on the uh, brake pads and possibly even the discs as well. So you wanna check and make sure that they are wearing at an even rate. So, coming up here to our brake lever. One, two, three. So three pushes on the pan, on the on the um, brake lever, and as you can actually see, even though, I'll tell you what, I'll get a light for this bit. So. Even though this was done rather recently, you'll actually see that the, the, the piston towards the back of the caliper has actually moved. This one's further out than this one towards the front here. Okay, um, You do tend to find that that happens sometimes. Um, they get a bit lazy. So this is why it needs to be cleaned out. So I'm going to do another three pumps now. But this time, I'm going to hold my finger over the one that is furthest out. One, two, three. Now the reason I've done that now is because it's encouraged the other piston to come and join it in the same position. So these two pistons are once again level with each other. I do apologise for the... Uh, the lights and things in the garage. I was going to do it outside, but it's a little bit windy. So I've had to sort of resort to being in the garage. But these two pistons are now, are now the, uh, the same uh, sort of uh, depth out of the caliper. So now what I want to do, give another little spray up in here, because I want to clean that up really. If I do need the scouring pad, I will use it, but I don't think I will. This is uh, surface. This is rust that's on here that will not come off. And now what I'm going to use is my piston caliper wind back tool to push those pistons back in. And this is why you want to have the pressure released off at the top of the reservoir because we're going to push those pistons back, which means pushing fluid up. So if there is an excess amount of fluid in the system, instead of it potentially cracking the brake reservoir window, it instead will just push fluid up over the top of the reservoir. It doesn't sound great, but that's why we've got the cloth up there. And the idea is to protect your paintwork and to make sure we get anything out of the system like air that we don't want to be in there. And we'll make sure our pistons are moving at the same rate. So once I've wound this back down, uh, push the sliders back a little bit. Uh, I'm to wind it back out. Now this one's designed for a car, whereas the motorcycle ones actually fit inside the uh, actual pistons. But once it's clamped down, I'm just going to very carefully wind it back. Now, bear in mind, obviously, you are pushing these pistons back. Um, there is going to be a bit of resistance. But also, be careful not to force it too much. You don't want to do any damage. So what I tend to do is when it starts getting a little bit too stiff, I just release it back off again. Just check to see how far it's gone back. And then I'll switch over to the other piston and do the same, because we want to get them returning at the same rate. So. Yeah. 
It takes a couple of times to push these uh, back in. And they don't need to go all the way back. There's no need to push them all the way back in. They just need to go back far enough that you can reseat the pads, get them level, and then you know that they're sitting level again. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pump them back out again. Uh, to make sure that they're moving at the same rate. Okay. So they're now seated back at the same level they were before. That's a better angle. So before the piston closest to me, i.e. this one was not far enough out and this one back here had come out further. So now we want to make sure that they are moving at the same rate. So three pumps again. One, two, three. Still not quite there, see? Um, again, not quite there. So we're going to repeat this. It could be that the front one is just a little bit too sticky at the moment. Keep an eye out as well, because they're actually, um, there are what's called dust seals down in uh, in here that that are um, can sometimes flip and actually stop the pistons returning. So just be aware of that. Um, they're little, almost like rubber, black rubber bands. Um, and if they start coming out, you really, you know, you can't reseat them very easily. Um, so at that point, if it's a dust seal, take it out. The fluid seal shouldn't come out, um, but if they do, you'll know about it because the fluid will come pouring out from the side of the piston. Um, but really, obviously, dust seals do need to re be replaced. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't look like first time through work, so carry on.